This is part of the PowerPoint slides I was asked to do back in July. I named this motion effect a bookshelf effect. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do this. So going from this to this, I use the transition called morph. So if you go to transitions and the first one is morph. So this is what I use to create that motion effect. What's happening here is uh, on the second slide, notice that the under transitions morph option is selected. That's all there is to it. There are 10 book pictures here. On the second slide, there are same 10 book pictures and these are just a copy. It's actually the same pictures from the previous one. So what I did was I duplicated the slide and I rearranged them. Okay, just I'm going to just show you two of those. So what happens is, so when I apply the morph transition to this slide, what it means is that things on the slide morphs from this slide to this slide. So if you focus on the, this image here, it's right here right now. But on the second slide, it's here on this position and it's a different size and different angle. And when it transitions, it morphs like this. That's what the morph means. It changing the shapes and the positions from one point to next. So that's what's happening. So if I placed this here, what's going to happen is this image is going to morph from here to here, which means it's going to move. It's going to get smaller. It's going to rotate a little bit. So this is what happens. Now let's look at this, um, another set of morph transitions here. Right, so for this transition, I mean, yeah, for this motion effect, I use the same concept. I use the same morph transitions. So right now, this image here is right here. On the second slide, it's moved to a different position and at a different size. Notice that under transitions, I selected morph. So again, slide content is going to morph from this slide to this slide. So the book picture is going to morph from here to here. Let's preview again. So what about the other books? What, what happened to them? They are also morphing. But thing is, these images here, all these book pictures are on a second slide positioned down here. So they are morphing from here to down here. And going from here to this again, I am using the morph transition again. So what's happening is, notice that under transitions, I applied morph transition to this slide. Uh, so what happens is, on the previous slide, these pictures are here, down here. But on the second slide, they are here. So they are morphing from here to here. In the same way, this picture here is morphing from here to here. So let, let's... Uh, play a preview. It's morphing. And also this image here and these texts here, how did they morph? The thing is though, I don't have that image and those texts on the second slide. So there's nothing that image and those texts are morphing into on this slide. In that case, the morph transition does not apply. In that case, they just fade out. So they are fading out from here to here. Let's see. They just faded away. So that's how it works. One thing you need to know about the morph transition is that this image here and on the next slide, this image here, PowerPoint needs to identify them as the same item. 
is so let's uh, go back here and if you go to home and go to select selection pane and click this item here it is called book zero one and on the second slide let's select this and it is called book zero one the selection pane shows the labels for the items on the slide for example the second book here it's labeled as book zero two on the previous slide okay the same picture here it's labeled as book zero two when you copy and paste images and text boxes these labels get changed sometimes if PowerPoint uses different labels for two things they're not going to morph between each other so you have to make sure that these labels are the same what I mean by that is when you create things on the on the slide PowerPoint labels it automatically this is called a rectangle one something you need to be careful about copying this and pasting it is okay, let's, let's copy it and I'm going to paste it here PowerPoint labels them as two different things the first one is rectangle one but the, the copy and pasted one is rectangle 19 and that happens to almost all the items on the slide so if you're letting PowerPoint label items on the slide this is going to happen so you want to be careful about that you can kind of prevent this you know PowerPoint creating new labels for each copied items by using duplicate slides so if you duplicate this slide this is still called rectangle 1 and this is still called rectangle 19 on the previous slide it's called rectangle 1 and rectangle 19 so different from copy and pasting duplication you know when you duplicate things slides labels are inherited but when you add a new slide for example and going back to the previous slide and copy this rectangle 19 copy this and paste it onto the next slide now it's called rectangle one it's auto labeling so if you're using auto labeling you have to be careful how the powerpoint is labeling the slide contents so this is the first rectangle on this slide it's called rectangle one on this slide kids and i'm going to copy this again rectangle 19 and going to the the next slide and paste it again now it's called rectangle 2 it's auto labeling items so what i did to prevent that is if i label this differently so if i double click it and uh, add two exclamation marks and enter it stops the auto labeling for this item so what happens is when I copy this and paste it onto the next slide it's still called the rectangle 19 auto labeling had stopped for this item so as you can see I I, I use this manual labeling for the all the items I'm morphing for example you know the books one two three four five six seven eight nine ten they are all manually labeled so that's all there is to it the so morph transition is all i used and i just made sure each morphed item is labeled the same so let me know if you have any questions or if you want to use my bookshelf template 